medicine can be there to prevent disease, it can be there to manage it, all sorts of things. Why medicine is so important, I guess, the base of it can't have health without medicine. It's such an integral part of um, primary health care and healthcare more generally, um, medication. When we talk about medication, you know, we're talking about vaccines, we're talking about traditional Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander medicines, we're talking about kidney medicines, medicines that you inhale or apply. So um, I think it's important that we really think about medicines broadly and that's the way that our national medicines policy describes it as well. The non-Indigenous side of that is it's pharmaceutical, so it's, you know, a drug. For us, medicines could be bush medicine. It's very holistic, so it's incorporating, bringing those two together. It's a bridge, and at Nacho, I guess we can consider ourselves that middle foundation, and it's, we have a lot to teach each other. We really need to remain focused on what the needs of Archos are and what the needs of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are in terms of medicines, and really, uh, one thing that the National Medicines Policy does talk about is partnerships and self-determination. The kind of mainstream poli policy environment in some ways and how do we support healthcare providers to be more culturally safe and more respectful and really embrace traditional Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander healing and medicines more specifically and at the moment I think there's, there's probably could be done more to explicitly support all Australians in some ways to support those cultures and uh, healing practices. You wouldn't understand how difficult it is for, for mob especially it's something when medicine you have a disease and you need medicine to stay alive it's not just you know taking popping a Panadol because you've got a headache. Those health outcomes when they don't have access to medicine can cost someone their life. The challenge for us is how do we integrate some of those priority reforms like community control into the medicines programs and policies that we have. There's decades or hundreds of years of systemic structural bias. To work through that is not going to be something unfortunately that we can realistically just change overnight but at least we have somewhat of a blueprint I suppose and that really gives us a way of trying to influence some of these structures that exist and make it more conducive to better care. More focused on the individual and especially on the cultural aspects of care which are not necessarily inherently part of our current health system. Yeah.